Welcome to another teardown video. This time it's a consumer product uh, or like a hi-fi collector's item product. This is a, a Luxman L10 amplifier. So it is two times 55 watts into eight ohms. And I think this is sine wave uh, one kilohertz all day long. At least this is what we're going to try. This one was modified a little bit for the studio levels and uh, the pot meter here is marked for the correct level. They, yeah, okay, I can see there's a button missing and this is another one. So that is a little bit sad to see because they were supposed to look like this. This one seems a little bit bent as well. There's a nice silk screen text here. And I believe this will be the two transformators. And it was recapped in 16. I really like this design, by the way. Really, really slim. So this is more than 10 kilos. It's really, really heavy. And this is the rear plate. <laughs> the good old tape deck. Dean connector. And there's a note here about ref input aux one. So this is the one we're going to be using. Speaker connectors are a little bit flimsy bimsy, but all right, this is only 50 watts, right? 55. Yeah. But it seems to be all right. Is there something? Yeah, okay, there is something in both of them. I think this actually works. So. All right. Hmm. Let's uh, fire it up and see if there is any smoke in this one. Okay, here's my two times eight ohm. Got some nice fans, but hey, those cables are not really compatible. <laughs> I think they're a little bit. Well, I could maybe make them fit. I just don't want to break. Oh yeah, this will. This will maybe work. This is a good way to check what you're doing before you're performing any kind of measurements. So the black terminal of the speaker is connected directly to chassis and it's the same on the other one. So that will make our measurements a lot easier. So nothing is abridged or lifted or any fancy tricks. It's just straightforward. So I think we are ready for the first power up. I did connect everything here. And this is the input. The two scope probes are on each side of that. One kilohertz and only 300 millivolt RMS. I think this will be way too low because this is modified a little bit for studio levels as far as I remember. But let's uh, let's turn on the input and nothing happens. Let me turn on the... Ooh, that's not good. Hello. I... Uh... So this, there's, this can't be good. So there's a, there's a fuse or what did I do wrong here? This is the main power, right? Hey, come new man. No luck, I've been poking around with everything here. So that means it is time for teardown and maybe a little bit of repair. So that is really sexy done. There's a rubber gasket all the way around here. So when you lift it up, 
you can get in here and it's nice and tight wow pretty cool and yep power supply is nicely recapped oh what what is that that is the fuse looked a little bit like smoked all right so there's definitely something wrong there's a reason why the fuse is blown right so that means when we plug in a new one we're going to use the vario and uh, crank it up slowly and then we'll see what is to blame for this but first i will do a careful optical inspection to see if there's any visual reasons for this problem it looks like we can get okay we can get into the amps quite easily as well so we need to do that so we can see more maybe we can actually see Ooh, what is that this resistor Ooh, yo, 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 yo. that can't be good and if we look at the other channel it is not at all like that. Ha ha! So we've got a channel that we shorted something. All right? Because here is something. Okay, and there's also fuses for the voltages and stuff. Or maybe this is speaker fuses. I don't know what that is. I think we could maybe be lucky and find a service manual or something online. I'll go and have a look. I think. This is the voltage selection or something. Okay, it says so. Okay. Really nice. Oh, that's a great feeling when you operate those switches. And also the parts feel really, really nice. Great. And this click feeling here is also just, wow, nicely made. I love it. It is really easy to get in here. All we just do is unscrew the side shields and also I think here in the middle is where the preamp or something like that is located. Wow, look at all that. DC paired transistors. Really, really cute. And that will be the tone circuits. What is that? So there's an input board full of all sorts of fantastic transistors in a little module. And what? So this this is just dust. I don't know about that module here. Oh, we also got some fuses. And this, so okay, this will be the DC power rail, and this will be the speaker fuse, I guess. So, here I'm gonna reveal another trick to you guys put in a new fuse, turn on the amp, crank down the voltage to zero, power on here, slowly crank up the voltage just below the fuse blow so that is 15 volts of ac input so now something here is using 22 watts i'm gonna let it do that for a few minutes and then i'm gonna take the thermal camera and see if i can find out where is all the good stuff going this is actually quite interesting this is the fuse. 
and this is the only thing you can see anything else you see here that kind of lights up this is only due to reflections from my light so what I think we should look at will be the rectifiers underneath the PCB See, so this is a only ref reflections from shiny components so it's a good way to see if it is something shiny all you have to do is just change the angle like I do here and then it will go away if it's a trick so rectifiers they will be underneath this PCB and this is where we need to go so I took up the PCB so this is all the auxiliary supplies and all the regulated supplies here we've got the two main rectifiers from the transformators rectifier capacitors amp and the wires for that goes underneath the capacitors so a really really short power way to all the good stuff so this is a super super optimal design and I just powered it up and you see we still got the short so should be fairly easy to measure on the two rectifiers see this is how easy it is maybe I can put the ah, damn it let me put the voltmeter here so you can easily see what I'm doing the two rectifiers for one channel so let me see This is the positive and this is the negative. So we got voltage okay for this channel. So the other channel. Ooh, positive is five and negative is zero. So this is the short. We got a shorted zero to chassis somewhere. So now I'm gonna take away the amp and uh Disconnect the voltages from the amp and see we still got all the voltages here. So here we go. So the amp modules are really easy to unscrew each side. And then you can just bend it out like this and you'll get access to everything here. And I just powered this up. And this is the main power input from the capacitors. And... So the positive goes to 5, and the negative goes to 0. So there's a short here, right? But again, look at the emitter resistors. One is really hot. Or had been really hot, right? So I bet this will be the PNP side, or the negative side, that is shorted. If I lift this... I'm probably going to get rid of this uh, short, but it's not a short. It's when there's no voltage here, you can't see the problem. It's only when you apply voltage, then you see it. If we compare to the other channel, they're all nice and wide. So it's not supposed to look like that. So here's uh, how it goes. Those are the PNP transistors. They're in the negative rail, I guess. All right. And the two base drivers or connections, I just lifted those two. And it's still the same problem. Mm, that is weird. So now we'll remove the emitters. Now, I've been disconnecting the main input to this entire amplifier module and measured the voltages here. And they are, of course, normal. But this amplifier module doesn't really draw a lot of current anyway. It is just because there is a little bit of unbalance when the voltages, they are really, really low. So that is what tricked me to waste a lot of time screwing around with wrong things that is really not the main problem also i measured the voltages after all the main rectifiers all that turns out fantastic but look again 
it is still those 20 watts of idle power and I'm only putting in 15 watts of mains. Let's have a look again. There is one main transformator and there's the other one. La la la. So, we got a burning hot transformator. So, this is beyond repair really. Unless, unless what? You can find another one? Good luck. Now I'll try and disconnect all wires and see if I can put in a mains and see if uh, it turns out uh, better. There could of course be another short in some of the other rectifiers because it's full of all sorts of uh, uh, smaller voltages and uh, stuff. But I'll try and see if there's a way to carry on from here. Another good trick is, of course, to disconnect the AC from the bridge, just to verify current consumption is not leaking somewhere. And that did not give any result. And this is for the low power or the high voltage to drive everything here. And this is easy to disconnect. So the, those are the two AC. And this is the center point for the secondary winding for for that auxiliary supply and that is still drawing 20 watts this dumb transformator so this is how it is connected the two yellow and the white high voltage low power two yellow and the brown a little bit lower voltage but high power and here we got the mains so black, yellow, that will be 230, and the orange, I think this will be 115, right? Just like, like the other one. Oh, it's really nice and warm now. And the other one is the same. It's also an unused orange one down here somewhere. Yeah. And there we go. So now we'll try and disconnect this entire entirely. But still, nothing is really lost because we still got the other one that is working. So what we can do is measure all the different voltages and have another one made to fit those specifications and see if let's see if we can put it in here. Because it should be possible to open this thing, right? <laughs> oh, I think they glued it in, those buggers. Oh, there's even a magnetic shield around here. They really did a lot of cool things. But anyway, there's definitely something wrong with this one. And to prove my point, Here's 15 volts of AC input and everything is disconnected and the damn thing draws 20 watts. <laughs> so yeah, we got a shorted or part, partially shorted primer because it is running, of course, really, really hot because it uses 20 watts. Yips. And of course I tried to power up the other one and everything is fine. It draws nothing. So, just to give this one last go, see if we can make it work, I just uh, disabled this entire left transformator thing, and now I'm connecting the right one also to the left power amp. So now I'm powering it up, and I can of course see that it is consuming quite a lot of bias. So, let's see. I think we're gonna stop at 83 volts because I don't dare to give it a lot more. There was a reason why the left transformator is, uh, yeah, kind of dead. Look at that. That is why. Ooh, turn this off again. It is because we got some driver issues. And that is, of course, this resistor that I was talking about. And that is 
one of the PNP transistors, but I don't really think the PNP transistors is the problem because there, there is also a driver for them down there and that measures a really, really weird thing. So I think this will be the next owner problem or it will be the trash can. We'll see what happens because I am done playing with this for today. But it was fun as long as it lasted.